26 year old woman presents to the emergency room complaining of uh, severe abdominal pain. This is her fourth visit for the same complaint over the last calendar year. She has a history of epilepsy for which she takes several medications, including valproic acid. So maybe this is something related to the toxicity of the valproic acid, what she's taking as a medication and which was added to her regimen within the last one year. Recent testing has included a normal CT scan of the abdomen, a normal endoscopy and a negative colonoscopy. Upon taking a more detailed history, you learn that she has no vomiting or diarrhea, but has not taken in food for the last two days because of pain. So your physical examination is significant for hypoactive deep tendon reflexes and a prominent left foot drop. This is one of the very important uh, clinical manifestation of the case that the hypoactive deep tendon reflexes and a prominent left foot drop. And you begin to wonder whether she may suffer from an autosomal dominant disorder involving a defect in the biosynthesis of heme and you decide to test her urine for elevated porphobilinogen as well as delta amino levulinic acid. So right from you begin to wonder, this is like extra point in the case, by the time of food drop, you should be in a position to identify this case and this is only the clue what we generally give you to identify what exactly the case we are talking about. So age is 26 years, sex is woman, and mainly present with a severe abdominal pain, but uh, CT scan of the abdomen is normal, endoscopy is normal. What do you think is the case? Because anyway, we even discussing about the clue over here, acute intermittent porphyria. Yes, it is a case of uh, acute uh, intermittent porphyria. How can you say that it is acute intermittent porphyria just by seeing this? Mainly by seeing that uh, abdominal pain, one of the symptom as well as like a normal CT of the abdomen, normal endoscopy, negative colonoscopy. And very important thing is the physical examination is significant for the hypoactive deep tendon reflexes and a prominent left foot drop. So mainly by this, yes, abdominal pain is the one which will actually determine this. So this is the case of acute intermittent porphyria. And the acute intermittent porphyria is an autosomal dominant disorder that results in a defective uroporphyrinogen 1 synthase. Acute intermittent porphyria is an autosomal dominant disorder result from a defect in the uroporphyrinogen 1 synthase. And this enzyme that is uroporphyrinogen 1 synthase involved in the biosynthesis of heme. Specifically, if you see the steps of heme biosynthesis, as I already mentioned, all of you have to be with your textbook so that you can see the cycle where exactly we are talking about and where exactly this uroporphyrinogen 1 synthase enzyme is involved in the biosynthesis of heme. Specifically, if you see that it catalyzes the conversion of porphobilinogen to pre-uroporphyrinogen. This is the step which is catalyzed by the enzyme uroporphyrinogen 1 synthase. Conversion of porphobilinogen to pre-uroporphyrinogen. So whenever this enzyme is deficient, PBG, that is porphobilinogen, as well as before PBG, there is a uh, delta amino levulinic acid, which is called as ALA because in the heme biosynthesis, uh, ALA is the suction alkyl plus glycine, which gives ALA by ALA synthase. After that, you know, the steps uh, follows is the uroporphinogen one synthase later. So not only the porphobilinogen, which is accumulated in this, and because of the feedback inhibition, there will be accumulation of ALA, which is delta amino levulinic acid. So because of the accumulation of ALA, there will be a neurological damage rather than accumulation of porphobilinogen. Remember this one. Accumulation of amino levulinic acid 
causes neurological problems although the mechanism of how this uh, like a neurological damage happen we don't know it and not only that not only this uh, delta amino levulinic acid parfobilinogen is also thought to be a neurotoxic and mainly the delta amino levulinic acid promotes oxidative damage to the cns write down this word the delta amino levulinic acid amino levulinic acid causes oxidative damage to the cns along with that parfobilinogen is also a neurotoxic so that's the reason there will be neurological problems manifestations what we are seeing in this case so mainly why there is an abdominal pain recurrent abdominal pain so the symptoms include intermittent recurrent abdominal pain this is mainly because of autonomic dysregulation remember it is not because of accumulation of any of these products because of the products which can cause autonomic dysregulation this autonomic dysregulation can cause like uh, intermittent as well as recurrent abdominal pain so we know that the abdominal pain is one of the important clinical manifestation which is mainly because of autonomic dysfunction the second is a neuropsychiatric signs and symptoms so neuropsychiatric uh, signs and symptoms are more evident in acute intermittent porphyria like blurred vision hallucinations hyporeflexia that is uh, decrease uh, reflexes peripheral neuropathy so all these things are mainly seen and urine the darkens are exposure to air and the patients are not photosensitive over here okay so what are the lab findings in this case there will be elevated urine as well as plasma parfobilinogen and also there will be amino levulinic acid in the urine along with hyponatremia so what is the treatment in acute intermittent porphyria the treatment of choice in acute intermittent porphyria is the hemen administration because this hemen mainly acts to decrease the synthesis of ala synthase and thus there will be decreased pbg and there will be decrease in the ala accumulation i am repeating once again that hemen h e m i n hemen is the one that mainly decreases the synthesis of ala synthase enzyme itself because it is a rate limiting step of heme biosynthesis so whenever there is a decrease in the synthesis of ala synthase by the hemen there will be decreased the parfobilinogen and uh, amino levulinic acid accumulation which can be generally seen so mainly in such cases what will happen is whenever there will be an increase uh, excretion of parfobilinogen as well as delta amino levulinic acid in the urine it also takes uh, takes important electrolytes uh, like sodium potassium and magnesium that leads to like uh, increased concentration of sodium potassium as well as magnesium in the urine and that causes but predominantly sodium that causes decreased concentration of sodium in the blood that can cause hyponatremia that can be seen so here we know what is the treatment hemen is the treatment of choice because it decreases the synthesis of ala synthase thereby it will decrease parfobilinogen as well as amino levulinic acid accumulation not only that discontinuation of the precipitating factors so what are the precipitating factors because in our case i already mentioned that the patient signs and symptoms may be because of the valproic acid the drug what she was taking so the precipitating factors for the development of acute intermittent porphyria is exogenous as well as endogenous gonadal steroids alcohol barbiturates when compared to all of the precipitating factors you need to remember that barbiturates are considered to be the most important precipitating factor to cause acute intermittent porphyria specifically valproate there's a reason discontinuation of the precipitating factors that is valproate valproic acid plus administration of the hemen is considered to be the treatment of choice in acute intermittent porphyria and mainly remember 
if there is a symptomatic acute intermittent porphyria, like what we are studying in this case, but generally a majority of the cases are asymptomatic. If the patient present with uh, symptomatic acute intermittent porphyria, that mainly results in patients who have a defective enzyme as well as exposure to drugs or environmental situations such as fasting that stimulates heme synthesis. Remember, only one factor defective enzyme does not cause a symptomatic acute intermittent porphyria. There should be a defective enzyme in the patient, plus there should be an exposure like precipitating factor like exposure to the drugs or environmental situations such as fasting which generally stimulate the synthesis of heme, only this can cause a symptomatic acute intermittent porphyria. There's a reason whenever you see the case of acute intermittent porphyria, we know that the enzyme is deficient, but always look for a precipitating factors. The precipitating factors may be fasting, exogenous or endogenous gonadal steroids, alcohol or bar uh, barbiturates, specifically look for the valproic acid one, right? So this is what uh, you need to know about the acute intermittent uh, porphyria.